All right, here we are after a long wait. After all the Swiss, here we are. Top cut. Give us the list, Eric. Let's see who made it. So looking at our top cut here, we have Charles Moses, Devone, Diego, Eric, Olivia, Patrick, Rishi, and Silas all top in our top eight today. Most of them finishing with a four and one record. Our three and two records were Diego and Patrick finished with the three and two, but it was a very competitive day today. Yeah, no one went five zero. Everybody no. has at least had one loss, so it's a very competitive day. Everybody kind of within the same skill range right now, so I'm excited to see how this shakes up. But what's our first match on the way here today, Eric? So our first match in our top eight, which is a single elimination, we are going to see Eric versus Patrick. It's going to be an interesting one. We've seen Eric play before, and he played very, very well. His team had Hatterian, Ndidi, Sneasler, Ogre Pond, Teal, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, and an Incineroar. And there are the trophies. That's what everyone's playing for, along with the points as well. But really, we're here for the trophies. Here for the trophies. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the Ogre Pond as well, the star of the show today. Pretty much on every single team so far, and almost played every single time as well. Yeah, Eric was running that Ogre Pond teal. That really just did a ton of work for him, along with that Sneasler team, with that Hatterene and Ndidi. He really has a very diverse team. Daravon, by the way, thank you, chat, for correcting me on pronunciation. Daravon. But this time, it's going to be Patrick that Eric is facing this time. It's going to be Ndidi female, uh, Ursa Luna, Armor Rouge, Ogre Pond, Cornerstone, another person running Ogre Pond Cornerstone, which is interesting. Torkoal and Gallade to wrap it all up. Looking at the terror types, nothing out of the ordinary really stands out to me so far. As for movesets, it's looking relatively standard as well, but it's really who's going to be able to pull off this comp better. They're very similar comps, but they do have a few key differences. Yeah, the, it's it's crazy. We talked about how prevalent psychic teams have been here today and the psychic spam teams, and we're seeing two of them face off in our top eight cut here. The question is, what do teams... I think the question... The Eric here has a mode that doesn't need Trick Room and doesn't need those modes, so I think as much as Sneasler is weak to those psychic type attacks, might see it be an advantage here because it doesn't need to rely on its on its Trick Room mode. We have Urshifu here on Eric's team. That's also very prevalent here. Where we see Patrick doesn't mm -hmm. have Urshifu. And he doesn't have a Sneasler as well. I don't know if you said that before. I was just thinking about the Sneasler. Um, I wonder if one of them, this would be an interesting play. One of them could not go for the Ndidi and just rely on the other Psychic Terrain. That is true. I wouldn't be shocked because Eric's team is so diverse that he doesn't bring Ndidi and Hatterene. That he runs with his... He might bring Hatterene, but I would, wouldn't be shocked if we don't see Ndidi here because he doesn't necessarily need it. Or if he drops Hatterene and brings his Ndidi. A lot of the time we've seen these Ndidis just go up, set up, sometimes are unable to be in a support, but a lot of the times just get singled out, knocked out within the first turn or two. So really, not bringing Ndidi right out of the gate could be a bonus for your team, but then... You're kind of gambling, because what if your opponent doesn't bring that either? You bring the Hatterene along, you don't have Psychic Terrain, kind of push, putting yours. It's a gamble, like the Torkoal gamble we saw earlier. And speaking of Torkoal, Patrick is bringing the Torkoal. Yeah, the Torkoal is really good here. Uh, we saw what Torkoal did in the last round. So that's the question. Like, Torkoal is really strong. It can do a lot of damage. And they can combo with that with the Armor Rouge. Yep. And I think that's it for, like, the true combo there. It's either going to be Indeedee. Well, who does Ndidi help? Oh, also the Armor Rouge there. Yeah, Ndidi also helps Armor Rouge. So, and the interesting three, thing... If we see the no, Armor Rouge. Yeah. For Armor Rouge here, Armor Rouge has got a lot of different modes it can go into, but really struggles if Rapid Strike Urshifu... We are going into it. We are seeing Rapid Strike Urshifu and Incineroar versus Ndidi and Ogre Pond. That Ogre Pond Cornerstone. That Cornerstone's gonna be rough against this Incineroar, but... They also have to take into account the Urshifu could shut that one right down. Yeah, so the interesting thing, especially with Eric's Incineroar here, is it's not running Parting Shot, it's running U-Turn. Which is actually really important for this team that he's going up against Patrick here. There's that Rock Ivy Cudgel. Does, does not take kill. out the Incineroar, but does a ton of damage to it. The Surging Strikes. They're sure to kill at this point, no? Is it? Eh, yeah. Oh. It will get the knockout there. 
That's a big knockout to lose that Ogre Pawn early. Yeah, losing that Ogre Pawn is going to be rough, especially not getting the knockout on the Ivy Cudgel. Yeah, my oh. guess is that it's probably Ndidi in the back, and Ndidi is going to come out and help out this Armor Rouge here. Force. Goes to the Expanding Force, gets the knockout though, so we do a little bit of a trade here. And two very strong Pokemon, both taken out on both sides. Armourish though, the Life Orb can lose a little bit. That knockoff. That knockoff. Oh! Life Orb just barely not taking too much. And now, he can potentially live a little bit longer now that Life Orb's gone. That's true, that Life Orb, but it did a ton of damage, and I don't know how much left that Armourish has in its tank. Ursaluna's gonna come out against the Ogre Pond. That Ogre Pond is going to look for that clean pickup. Trick Room was not set up, so Urs Luna is going to move pretty slow here. That Ivy Cudgel is going to hit like a truck on that Urs Luna, but will it be enough? I think they're singling out the Armor Rouge, expecting a defensive play. Urs Luna. My guess is that Eric wants Patrick to set up Trick Room. He's going to send in Hatterian with Trick Room set up. He thinks he's going to knock out the Urs Luna. He's going to go for a big read here. I think he's going to go all in to try and hope the Psychic Terrain comes up next. That Patrick is holding the Ndidi in tow, but we'll see if this gamble plays off. Maybe both players did Goes for the, the Protect on the Ursaluna. Not shocking. I mean, Ursaluna wants its guts up, right? There's the Ivy Cudgel. On the Takes Rouge. out the Armor Rouge. Now, Patrick taking down to his last two Pokemon. It's going to be a very tough climb back. That's the question is what is in the back here for Patrick? He needs something to help get Ursaluna into position to attack. Oh, the burn. Yeah, the burn from that flame orb gets the guts activated. Sod could be coming up very soon. It's Torkoal, not what I was expecting to be honest. So now this Hatterian sitting in the back, not looking too great to be honest. If Patrick can manage to take somebody out here, it could be a good scenario for him. Yeah, going to double target into this Ursa Luna here. This Ursa Luna, unless it goes to the double attack, it's Terra normal, I am pretty sure. Let me double check that. Let's see. No, this Ursa Luna is Terra Fairy. A Terra Fairy could be big here. But is it worth using it on Ursa Luna when Ursa Luna has a good chance to die here? Or do you just Terra your Torkoal and hope that Torkoal can sweep the rest of the team? I don't know, that's the question and it will be answered very soon. There's Ursula the Terra. Going into the Terra Fairy gets rid of that ground weakness so that Ivy Cudgel won't do as much damage as it was going to originally. And there it is. How will this shape up? There's the Ivy, Ivy Cudgel. Cudgel. Does it kill? Doesn't no, it get doesn't. The kill. Doesn't do very much either. That Flare Blitz, Flare Blitz. is gonna hurt. Gets the knockout! Wow. And I that, did not think that Incineroar had the knockout, but it did. I didn't either. For some reason, I doubted that it do that much damage with Flare Blitz. Just such a strong move when it hits for all its power there. But I think Incineroar goes down. No, it's still up. It's going to die to the Heat Wave. Dies to Heat Wave. Is that a Sash? Yep. Oh, we did wow. know that, that that Ogre Pond was Sash. So the Ogre Pond lives with Sash and now can hit back with a Stopping Tantrum. This is disastrous for Patrick Chang, but not unwinnable if he plays his cards right. The fact that Saturine doesn't have Trick Room, doesn't have Psychic Terrain, it's not going to be the monster it usually is. No, it's not. It doesn't have all the tools it needs to set up, but does that matter? This Tommy Tantrum is going to do a ton of damage. Not as much as I thought it would have done. Torkoal Stanky. Expanding Force. Gets oh, the knockout. Wow. Even without the setup, Hatterene, just an absolute unit there, dealing out so much damage. In the first game, he's gonna go over Eric Wong. Yeah, I feel I feel like if you're Eric, you gotta feel pretty comfortable about that win. Nani said he's he's feeling it. Pretty dominant win. You got pushed back to the ropes a little bit there, but not enough to totally shake your confidence. Yeah, definitely. There was It was a tough match, as these matches are going to be. It's warranted. We're here in the top cut. These are the best of the best. These matches are going to get longer, going to get harder. But, you know, Eric does have the match point here. And this is single elimination. I'm sure that Patrick doesn't want to go out here. So he's going to probably change his team up. And how would you expect to change his team? If you're Patrick, what you're looking for, you might be looking to bring in... Gallade, you might need the Amoongus here. The Amoongus is a hard read onto this team. There are a lot of grass types on Eric's team, and there's a lot of things that 
the Amoongus does not want to... F- he does not have Amoongus. I'm reading Armor Rouge. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. What do you do? Ursa Luna really didn't get into position where it was strong enough. You didn't get Ogre Pond into position where it was strong enough. You just didn't have the right setup, so who do you bring instead? I'm trying to think. Do you think this Gallade could have any use going up against the team? I don't quite think so. You know, the Hatter encounters it, and there's not much. Really, that Patrick could change. I think he's already leading with his strongest types, and or his strongest Pokemon. Meanwhile, Eric could change it up and be even stronger going into the next one. Yeah, we know we didn't we didn't see Eric's Sneasler, which is one of his strongest Pokemon when it can get set up correctly. The question really is Gallade. Is Gallade good here? And I do not know if it is. Wide Guard's normally a great move. Blocks a lot of spread moves. There's a lot of spread attackers in this game, but I don't think that Wide Guard is going to be helpful enough in this matchup. You could maybe try... Yeah, I don't know. I agree. There's not much, especially in this specific matchup, that Wide Guard is going to do. Yeah, uh, I think you look at... Maybe you look at getting Armourge in a different position. You led with Armourge, and Armourge really didn't have what it needed to win. Yeah, there's no Psychic Terrain. No. We're sun. seeing the Urshifu, and we're seeing the same lead. The Gallade and the Ogre Pond here. Interesting lead. This Ogre Pond really didn't get time to shine. Really got singled out there in the beginning, but maybe the pressure from this Gallade it will last a Going for the Surging Strikes. Surging Strikes is targeting. They want this Ogre Pond gone. This Ogre Pond does have Spiky Shield. If you're Patrick, I feel like you Spiky Shield and kind of just get away with it. Goes to the Fake Out on the Glade. Glade won't get to do anything. And the crit. Because why not? Woodhammer. Takes. Oh, it doesn't no, it take doesn't. it out. Lives on 30. Could be 20. That's Surging gonna Strikes take is going to take, him take out. out Ogre Pond there. And a crit. Add insult to injury. injury. Eric crits every... Oh, yeah, it always crits. But still, every hit a crit this turn. Yeah, really, Urshifu is such an unstoppable monster, and that fake out with Incineroar really just dealing damage to the Glade there. You do not want to see. Yeah, this is a rough start for Patrick, you know. <sighs> Going into the Armourge there. When you Armourge that... not in the position it wants to be in here. No, not at all. Urshifu a little bit worse for wear, but I don't think Patrick has any spread moves right now. On the Pokemon he has out currently. And as you're right, you we are I don't think either of these teams brought in DD, because both of them thought the other would bring in DD. So they're both in this position of they do not have psychic train. Maybe maybe Patrick has in DD as that fourth mon, but that's that'd be an odd place to keep in DD. I think Armor Rouge is a little bit more reliant on the psychic terrain though than Hatterian, as we saw. Hatterian still does decent damage without it. Now Look over here, we're going to see a Terra come out from Patrick. Who would this be on? Let's see, it's the Armor Rouge. Terra Armor Rouge going to a Grass type here. Trying to block those Surging Strikes from just instantly wiping it out. Still, it is not in a good spot. Surging Strikes, not going to take out the Armor Rouge here. I'd be very shocked. It's not going to take it out, but it's still going to get it very low. Maybe enough for this Incineroar to take it out with a Flare Blitz. We really want to commit take this one out. Let's see. There's the expanding force only into the Urshifu. Gonna pick up the Urshifu knockout, but not before Urshifu really chipped into the team. Yeah, without Trick Room, not enough speed to really get the edge on. Sacred Sword. That's gonna be Gets huge! knockout! Patrick back in the driver's seat here. This game is not over, folks. Ogre Pond coming in. Hatterene, Hatterene coming in. Second set coming out, and Patrick still has one in his back pocket. You don't know what that fourth Pokemon is. My guess is it could be that Ursaluna hiding in the back there. Let's see. Let's see. Ursaluna. Just waiting for the moves here. I don't know what's going to be played. I think we might see a Terra come out on the side of Eric, potentially. I'm trying to stop this type coverage because now. Not looking great for him. He needs something to swing in his favor, and he's down to his last two mons. He's well committed now. Yeah, they ter I wouldn't be shocked to see the Terra Grass Ogre Pond. Maybe he's banking on the fact that it is Ursaloon in the back, and he's going to set up and just stomping Tantrum away that Armor Rouge. 
Did you see the Terra? What's gonna Terra? Let's see. That's a question we've always been asking ourselves every time. That is gonna be Terra. There's the Terra Teal Mask. There it is. It picks up a speed boost here from the Grass Mask. Might be enough to get a move out before anybody else Ivy does. Cudgel. Ivy Cudgel. Who does it hit? The Armor Rouge. Oh, no, the Glade. the Glade. Takes out the Glade before Glade can set up Trick Room. Oh, no. And now the Armor Rouge already at half HP. Going to take a shot. There's the Armor Cannon. Does it Will hit? it get the knockout? It does. The no, because the Focus Sash. I forgot about the Sash. Can't forget. I think Patrick forgot about the Sash as well. He's trying for a last-ditch effort. Doesn't quite hit the mark. Now, with Hatterene. Using expanding force. force. This should be all that. Gets the knockout. That is it. That is our game one here. There's the still one more Pokemon. Pokemon. It's not oh, over until it's over. I completely forgot about the last Pokemon. What was hiding in the back? Let's see. It was Torkoal. Torkoal. Torkoal has spread moves. He might be able to take out this Ogre Pawn. Ogre Pond's probably going to spike his shield this first turn. Torkoal needs to live here. It's going to spiky shield. It is. Spanning force. It's gonna hurt. How much will this do to Torkoal? That's the question. It's gonna eruption for sure first. Spanning force. Wow. That's a ton of damage. Torkoal with the heat wave into the spiky shield. This block. There's a heat wave. Hatterene. Oh, almost gets the knockout, Hatterene. If there was. <laughs> Anytime you were wishing you set up Trick Room, now is the time. That would have been the time. As there it is, Torkoal taken out. Patrick Chang knocked out of the tournament here. But Eric Lawn advances to the semifinals here. Yeah. What a showing from him. What an absolute amazing play by Eric. He's been dominant in the past few games we saw from him. Didn't bring the Indeedy and didn't need the Sneasler. He will go into our top four, and we will see him again. We will just see who he's playing against. Exactly. Eric looking very good going forward in this tournament. But props to his opponent there. Patrick played very, very well. And look at that. There's respect all around. Everybody just discussing strats, you know, because everybody wants to advance together. And, you know, they just played very, very well, both of them. Yeah, again, some great matchups. I think Patrick was just at the scenario where he didn't have much to counter Eric's team. Eric's team's so versatile. There's so many different pathways they can go down that really just left Patrick in an awkward situation there. Yeah, that was just a little bit rough for Patrick. He's kind of playing catch-up, and it seems like Eric was in control of the battle the whole time. You know, I think just losing Ogre Pond, such a powerful uh, Pokemon to have on your team, First turn is awful. Those yeah. surging strikes just kept taking out that Ogre Pond. I think that's what really led to Patrick's loss there. Because even without Ogre Pond, he played very, very well. Yeah, definitely some great matchups. I'm excited to see what happens. Maybe tomorrow Patrick comes back. Again, he got to top eight today. That was enough to get him in a top cut. Maybe he comes back tomorrow with something new. Bring some new life into him tomorrow. Exactly. That's a good thing, you know, because we have the two-day event here, you know, you can play this one, be a little bit more experimental, see what works, see what doesn't, learn from your mistakes, adjust accordingly, come back even stronger. Yeah, it'll um, be really exciting to see what they play tomorrow. So, congratulations to Eric. We can look... On. Yeah, it was a great match. And what, do you, what are our possible opponents here? What are your favorites going in here if you had to choose, just looking at the record? Yeah, I think one exciting matchup from two players we've already seen today is Charles versus Olivia. Olivia came out of that first game looking incredibly strong and was able to carry that momentum all the way with her into the into top cut here, finishing 4-1. and one. Wow. But Charles, we also saw earlier today, had an interesting team. He did have a very interesting team. So, it'll be interesting to see now that we're in these top cuts, I feel like all of the players we have seen today on stream have had these fun and exciting teams that have led them to this final place here. Yeah, it's been so fun so far, and I just love the variety of teams we're seeing. And I'm very surprised that we're seeing the Psychic Turin really be the meta here at this specific tournament. Because, you know, we were mainly expecting it to be Fluttermane and... Raging Bolt, you know, the typical favorites. And Incineroar. We've been seeing Incineroar here and there, but I don't feel like he's been totally dominant because of his Incineroar. It just feels like it's a strong fire and dark type to have on your team. 
yeah, he really feels like he's not the Incineroar we know and love as the dominant meta threat, but he's been appearing here and there. I really think our dominant meta threat today has been Ogre Pond. Definitely, definitely. And we're sure to see more Ogre Pond after our quick break. We'll be right back with our semifinals, I believe. So don't go anywhere. We have more Pokemon on the way. 